back to the Call of Duty Championship presented by Xbox. Myself, Maven, with Rel. We had a good match for you here. Yeah, it is time. This is the first time we've actually ever cast together, yeah. so I'm, I'm particularly excited about it's this, actually. Quite, quite exciting. But this is going to be Team Caliber going up against Wild Gaming. Now, yeah. you told me you saw a Wild Gaming game earlier. Yes, uh, we did the first Wild Gaming match uh, today. It was, I believe, I believe Gandhi and I did, and they played against Lightning Pandas, as we know. Uh, Lightning Pandas has struggled a little bit uh, early in this event. They yeah. lost to Wild. They didn't lose to TK. So they're the only 0-2 team in that group currently, which I believe is Group Three. Uh, but Wild looked uh, Wild looked very strong. Um, they were looking. I think the only game they lost was the Blitz. Okay. Uh, Lightning Pandas look a, l a little bit faster on the Blitz game types, but uh, other than that, I mean the S and D, the Dom, uh, they just really had control. I mean, we've got to say with Wild Gaming, probably the X factor of the team is next. Yeah, yeah. Nex is uh, the, the the American on the squad. He's yeah. he's known for uh, game battles. He also, I believe, plays plays at what fifth fifth six at uh, UMG Philly. That's right. Uh, yeah, played on the Eagle Slayers actually. Was yeah, team yeah. Name. Interesting team name yeah. there. But I uh, love that guy though because I mean he's yeah. one of these. He's a vocal leader. He's very charismatic. He's got a big yeah. following as well on Twitter. I believe around the thirty eight thousand follower mark. And I think he's going to be a crucial factor as to whether Wild Gaming have a shot against Team Caliber, who we both know are really strong. Oh, yeah. TK, you know, I just got to spend at the U uh, UGC land that uh, Gandhi and I were a part of uh, just, what, two weeks ago. It was the pre-land that had TK, Complexity, Justice, and Curse, uh, Curse New York. TK, by the end of the weekend, was looking strong. We had kind of a little round-robin type thing on Sunday, and they actually ended up beating Complexity to win the little tournament in, the, in Game 7. And uh, for those of you that know me, I'm a come from the Halo background, so Formal, Formal's my boy. Yeah, because and, I mean Formal's one of a few players who've actually made that transition from Halo to to Call of Duty. Yeah, and he made it well and in a hurry. And uh, you know, I just I've been trying to watch him as much as I can. But from what I've seen, it does not appear the nerves are the issue. He's playing really well. But here we will start off, and uh, looks like we're gonna have them. I was I felt trophy system already down on A for these guys, and we'll see uh, see how they start off. Yeah, I mean Domination Strike Zone, obviously a very very small map. So next. Uh, just going by that trophy system because, of course, he could have been challenged very early on. He's quite happy to just sit back, though, on this A capture. Let's just expand the map and see what is going on so you guys have a better view in that top left-hand corner of the full map. And here we go next. Now picks up the kill in Pro Shop. He's going to make this push towards C. Yeah, and uh, we've seen a couple different things today just in the bit I've been casting. You know, typically I like to see that AC control where they try to pin them inside bar, you know, dominate as much outside by you know, the cutoffs. But it's been... It kind of hectic in the game we've watched. It's just been all sub play, sprinting around, kind of just rotating and keeping what they can. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see if the favorite team here in TK can kind of get a, you know, a bit of a spawn trap going in Dia. All right. Well, let's see what Incense can do. I mean, one thing I would say about this map that we often see is teams just sitting back with the two flag capture, but they just constantly have to rotate to hold on to that two flag capture simply because these spawns are so so close to each other. Yeah, 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 and that's that's what I think I've seen mostly today. It's just this scramble, this constant rotation, which a lot of the games turn into. I mean, very rarely do you get to see that. What I consider my, I mean, my favorite thing is when a really good team just gets that good AC control, but. It's that's in a perfect world. Yeah. Usually, you see constant rotation uh, with uh, with players flying around the map, and just early going here, about a minute and a half in, it's pretty much tied up. Uh, nothing too crazy to speak of. Uh, looks like Incepts is off to a six and four start, which is a you know great start for him. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, giving Wild Gaming quite a bit of coverage here. These were the second team from Canada uh, to actually qualify of the two teams here, and uh, yeah, they actually got defeated in the grand final of the Aust uh, sorry of the Australian of the Canadian qualifiers uh, by. So that'd be a long Mexico. trip for them. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. Heck of a flight. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you know, the, the point is they're a really strong Canadian team, of course, featuring next from America. But going up against them, TK, I mean, where do we start with these top four in every land that they've attended, TK? Yeah, uh, and just some stats that were thrown around um, after, I believe, after regionals. I think it was formal, tied, I believe, Scumpy for most kills and respawns. Theory all around was the best player when it came to flag caps, like KD, just everything kind of added together was the best all around player at the regional event. So you could say they have some weapons. Yeah, I mean, just looking at the other three players excluding Formal, all of those were in attendance at the Call of Duty Championships last year, but in different teams. So Theory came seventh with BVV, Sharp fifth with Fear, Goonjar ninth and twelfth with Donald Sharp. So they're more than uh, familiar with the pressure that they're facing. Here. Yeah, and you got to think just by those three separate finishes last year that they're definitely looking to improve upon this. And I think, you know, before SP won regionals, you would have picked them to really be, uh, I I'd say, you know, the number two pick. And I they still are, in my opinion, but... 
we'll see. I, I'm, I'm really, I, I look forward to seeing them the top four. It's going to be my guess for them. All right. Well, it is high expectations for Team Caliber. They do have the lead so far in this strike zone domination. It is currently 54 to 40, and that's a very comfortable 14-point lead for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not, not too strenuous. Uh, it looks like just from a slang standpoint, Sharp and Gunjar are really getting the job done, whereas typically, you know, Formal and Gunjar will be their lead slayers. Sharp, in theory, more handle that kind of X-Factor slash OBJ work. But uh, early going, you're, you're seeing uh, Sharp, who is just having a great game. And he was the one player I was concerned about because at the recent LAN, he really was struggling when it came to kills. He was he was kind of, him and TP were the two that were struggling to kind of keep up with the rest of their squad. But it uh, looks like this game, at least, he's come to play. Well, this is it. I mean, uh, you know, there's been a lot of criticism flowing TP's way other than that. But the true sign of a professional is when they can just forget about their past uh, uh, past mistakes, I suppose, or past uh, poor performances and just move forward on from it. I'm going to watch a little bit. There he see what he can do here as he does get that knife into the chest of the enemy, pushing towards A now. They are two flags down as we are seeing Wild Gaming trying their best to get back into this. But that is a noticeable difference in points. Oh, yeah. They've uh, jumped out a little under a minute left here. That's 72 to 56 lead. We're leading about 16 points. I mean, that's nothing too too crazy. I mean, that's certainly something that could be switched in a hurry uh, by round two. But you'd like to see Wild bring it a little bit closer uh, at the you know the final seconds of this map. But so far, I mean, kind of what I think we both expected. TK is firmly in control. Not a blowout, but in control. Yeah. And uh, just looking at Sharp now, I mean, Sharp, what can we say about him? He's been a professional in every single Call of Duty title, even winning the Call of Duty 4 National Championships in 2009, a long, long time ago. And he just maintains this this uh, uh, amazing form, really, on every single Call of Duty that gets released. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that's one thing you look for, especially, you know, when you're in at this level, it's uh, consistency. Yeah. And uh, that, you could say that he certainly is the definition of consistency. As we wind down to the final five seconds here, uh, it looks like we're going to have what's it going to end up. I, I like to jot it down because, you know, I, I don't have an assistant here to keep <laughs> these notes for me. But uh, they're going to lead this first round by 21. Uh, and I think, in my opinion, that's going to be enough of a lead to carry on through to have them take this game one, but we'll, we'll see. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's fairly noticeable. When you do see uh, ties often on domination, it's generally around the 67 to 67 mark. So a 21-point lead is very, very significant, and I've got to say, particularly on this map. Yeah, yeah, um, that I couldn't agree with that more. And just looking at the KDs, you know, one thing just to point out from TK is, uh, you know, form will struggle a little bit, but that's their first game in a bit here. And, you know, he's actually kind of the player that I was most concerned about with my pick for TK to finish in the top four, just because he has a ton of tournament experience. I yeah. mean, he competed and won basically every single event in Halo 4 and really started to come out at the end of Reach. But as far as Call of Duty, a couple events and nothing, well, one, nothing existed in Halo like this. I mean, yep. look, look at this. This is just amazing it's that crazy. we're a part of this. Uh, and I just... He's a confident dude. I'm hoping he can, has the nerves to uh, keep up with everything, but uh, we'll see as the weekend goes on. Yeah, I mean, that experience is really going to come into play because, sure, it was on a different game, but, I mean, there's a lot of newcomers to actual uh, uh, LAN here or actual events. Team Orbit, who I've been casting over previously, this is kind of their first ever event excluding the actual European Championship. Yeah. So, and, you know, that pressure, they will be feeling that. They're not used to this sort of environment. And when you compare that to the likes of Sharp, who's been competing at the highest level possible since Call of Duty 4, uh, the differences do start to show. Oh, yeah. But, you know, then you look at, like, the Australians that have come to this event. And, you know, I saw uh, something that you know, they've competed. They won, you know, like, 17 lands last year. But I just have to think, you know, and I'm not as familiar with the Australian scene as sure. many may be. But i got to think at least it's not quite as big as it is over here. Oh, no. Um, so I, I was kind of thinking, I, I guess I – not to sound negative, I expected less, maybe. I didn't think they were going to be as dominant as they were. I mean, the fact that they took games from Envy and FaZe, this whole this whole weekend's just crazy. Like yeah. I don't even know what to guess anymore, it, it, just because we saw those two teams who many would probably have in the top six range that are struggling early on. I mean, there's a lot of hype around them at the moment. I do believe Immunity have now lost to Tech, which will put them on 1-1 in yes. their group. Uh, but that's going to be a really interesting group because Envy are probably going to fight back in there. Yeah. Uh, but only time will tell how that is going to end up. Regardless, though, we are in a different pool, of course, and this is Wild Game and the Canadians, one of the two Canadian teams in attendance, going up against TK. Some people's favorites to actually win the championship. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's they're, they're probably, you know, we, I can't be too biased as a commentator here, but TK, just uh, due to my background with some of the players and especially, you know, knowing Formal for years, I mean, they're, they're the squad I'm rooting for. So it's exciting for me to see, you know, how they're going to perform in this series and, and going forward. And at least that uh, the first side of Dom, I mean, pretty pretty dominant win. Uh, nothing 
you know, no 40, 50 second blowout. You know, I just did the, uh, on this same stream, the 4v3 with uh, Gandhi. I, think, I yeah. think it was 180 second win oh, really? of Dom. Uh, so that, wow. this is a little, is a little bit different than that. Of course. Well, I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give a wild gaming a little bit of love here because of All course, right. excluding Nexus, who we know quite a lot about. There are of course three other top Canadian players on this team with Anticity, Incept, and Brock, and we are watching Brock, who's made a very early push to the B flag and secured it. Yeah, and Brock and Anticity are two. I mean, I saw Brock drop. I think like a 38-19 game in Dom oh, in the, wow. one of the first series we did with him. So when it comes to slaying, uh, he is certainly more than competent. Okay, well, he does get shut down there. Let's see what Incepts is up to. He was on 4 0, does get shut down. Anticity last alive temporarily there. <laughs> he is spraying and praying, but unable to make that kill. Yeah, and that was good at, you know, at least picking up the one because they were in a three down. It last one alive. Just getting that kill and delaying any kind of push from them uh, was huge. But uh, as we can see here, uh, if you just throw up the mini map here so we can just get a look at the. Perfect, thank you. We, uh, we can see they do have, uh, we're on board with Brock. They do have just just B right now. So that this is not this is not where they want to be currently as the Brock gets taken out. Not at all. I have to switch Oracle mode on as well for you guys because, I mean, for the benefit of the people back home, the players cannot see these silhouettes of the, oh, yeah. the enemy. We should make that clear now. That's just for your benefit. But uh, we get to see where the uh, pushes are coming from. And it just looks like Wild Gaming are just getting shut down now. They're just trying to breach out of this B flag. And oh, just getting my. Out. But Anticity, big, big kills there. And you can see them storming over to see. That was filthy. I don't think he saw. There was another guy up there top middle. It's yeah. like they crossed each other's paths, but just weren't, weren't aware of each other's distance. That's an easy kill for him. And we're going to see here if he's going to try and make a move on A or just help with defense at B. And it looks, well, he's actually going to do neither. I mean, they've got to be careful really while gaming here because sure they are behind and they have a, a lead to catch up to, but they don't want to get too uh, overconfident and leave their own flag exposed. They've still got to defend it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, it is still tight, but this is kind of similar to how that first round started. Uh, oh, sorry, the first side started. It was uh, pretty even, and then TK just started to gradually pull away. We're at the three-minute mark now, so still still a ton of time. But remember, they do have to make up 20, 21 seconds from that first side. All right, well, let's see what is going on with Theory now, who is the engine of the team. Very vocal, main slayer. Ooh, least speaking two. of which. <laughs> yeah, I know. Great time to switch over, right? But he lost to Epsilon in uh, the Call of Duty Championships 2013, and he placed seventh. I believe that was $35,000 that he took away as a result. Uh, but yeah. let's see what he's able to do here. I think it's fair to say he's looking to take home more than thirty-five grand this oh, weekend. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, TK, as I say, a lot of people's favorites. I'm sure the hashtag TK all days are flowing over Twitter as this game is being played out. And uh, formal, as we say, former Halo uh, professional, now trying his look for Call of Duty. Yeah, and uh, one thing, I mean, you can say about formal, um, you know, not that he's not a smart player. It's just what he is known for is uh, typically he just doesn't miss a lot. What he was known for in Halo was sniping, and it was just ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Heads were just coming off. And as you can see, wow. he shoots very well. And uh, that's why I think the transition was very easy for him, because we are, after all, commentating a first-person shooter. Yep. Uh, well, he did go from Team Fair at UMG Philadelphia here to TK. Yep. Um, as we say, not well in it too much, but he was Rookie of the Year 2011 for Halo Reach. And he's really he made just, his mark. He was just melting there. I think I he know. ripped off five in a row. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's exciting to see, you know, people coming over from other games as Call of Duty just continues to grow and grow into this ever-increasing juggernaut. And uh, it's fun to watch players come over from other games and to see how they adapt. Well, here we go on board with Goonjaw, was temporarily a member of Envy after switching back to TK, uh, staying loyal to his initial team. And he's going to see what he can do here. We're just looking at the scores, and we can see it's actually tied 58 to 58, uh, just slightly now edging in TK's favor, but a much closer side than the first half. Oh, yes, yes. This is much, much closer. And I, I don't know if this is part of TK, you know, going in with a big lead to the second half and maybe being a little less physical, or if it's just, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe the other guys here have figured something out. Wilds kind of you know, figured out this TK side and what they like to do in these rotations. But just the fact that this second side is so close, I think we're actually in for maybe a much closer series than I first expected. Absolutely, and I'd, I'd completely agree with you on that. I mean, I think I have underestimated Wild Gaming here. I knew they were a strong team, but TK's dominance, as I say, top four at every event they've attended, uh, you would expect them to just be storming over the likes of a uh, 19th seed team in this event. Yeah, no, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, it was, uh, I was kind of surprised to see they actually dropped the game to Lightning Pandas. I mean, not that Lightning Pandas doesn't have some great talent, but yeah, if you're a TK and pool play like this, I mean, most of the top teams, your top like three, four, you don't want to really be dropping any games. It should be 3 0, 3 0, 3 0. But one thing we have to consider is the play style that some of these uh, more competitors, even 
someone like even Canada with wild gaming, they play different than a lot of the top Americans. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there is too uh, little time really for the Canadian team of wild gaming to do anything here. So it is going to close out 69 to 86. And uh, a very similar scoreline, actually, to the first half. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about how they weren't really staying so close. And at the end there, TK really, really turned it up. I yep. think it ended up being, what, 38, 39 uh, 38, point yep. win uh, for them. So that was, uh, you know, uh, not talking now, but the 40, 40 seconds is a, or 40 points is a pretty, pretty solid win. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think this is exactly it with TK because, sure, they may not come out of the starting blocks and absolutely crush their enemy in the same way. You know, I was casting over a complexity game earlier where we saw a 109-point uh, domination lead. TK just play to win. You know, yeah. they, they don't want to really prove the, a point here. They just want to win their games, and they're doing just that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, the second game, we're waiting to hear, uh, you know, what map the Search and Destroy is going to be on. But uh, TK, you know, from you know from the recent land, we got to see a bit of their S&D game versus complexity, and it was... It was a roller coaster. I mean, one day complexity was dominating, then the next day TK just looked unbeatable on search and destroy. Uh, I know for the bits we watched wild, at least in that first series they had earlier today, they look they look competent, they look very strong. So this should be a pretty good matchup. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We are going to cut to a very quick break though before we go onto the search and destroy. Don't go anywhere, guys. We will be back with you shortly.